Hi, I'm Tanya with the STEM team at Foundry 10. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And STEM activities are great to run with kids because they encourage critical thinking and creativity to solve problems. In this video, I'm gonna introduce one of my favorite STEM activities, bubble design. The goal of this activity is for kids to create their very own bubble recipes using ingredients they can typically find around the house. You can find all the information you need to run this activity on the Foundry 10 blog. Let's get started. Before you begin, you'll want to collect your materials. For this activity, you'll need cups or bowls to mix the bubble recipes, measuring cups and spoons, a bubble wand, I make mine by twisting a pipe cleaner, water, dish soap, shampoo, glycerin, and corn syrup. So now I'm gonna model both parts of this activity using what I have around my house, my husband, Ben. So Ben might look like an adult, but he's a kid at heart and he's gonna play our STEM enthusiast today. I'm ready to science. Let's start by introducing the activity and asking some questions to get Ben to think about what he already knows about bubbles. So Ben, today you're gonna to make your very own bubble recipe. Can you tell me about what types of bubbles that you like? I like really big bubbles because they are fun to pop. Oh yeah, those are super fun. So it sounds like you've identified one type of bubble property, the size. So we know that bubbles could be really big or really small. Can you think of any other type of bubble property? Um, some bubbles float really high in the sky and some of them fall to the ground. That is very true. So their ability to float. So do you like bubbles that pop immediately or do you like bubbles that last a long time? I, I like it when they last a long time so I can chase them and pop them. Yep, that's super fun. All right, so it sounds like we've identified three bubble properties that we care about. We've got size, their ability to float, and how long they last. So you can think about these properties when we make observations about our recipes today. All right, so your first step today is to create some preset recipes to investigate how our ingredients here affect the bubble's properties. Your goal is to make as many observations as you can about the bubbles that you create. All right, you can get started by making your first recipe. Oh boy. Our first recipe is half a cup of water and two teaspoons of dish soap. Mix it up and test it out. All right, your first bubble recipe. Let's check out these bubbles. Whoa, all right, what do we notice about these bubbles? These float really good. Oops. All right, what else are we noticing? They seem to last a long time. Why don't we write those down so we can remember that for later? As your child creates each recipe, ask them about their observations. What do they notice about the bubbles? How are they similar? How are they different? Throughout the process, encourage your child to write down their observations so they can remember what they've learned for the second part of the activity. All right, now that we've tested our ingredients to see how they affect our bubbles properties, it's time for you to make your very own bubble recipes. But I have a challenge for you. Your goal today is to make a bubble recipe that creates bubbles that last as long as possible. But I've got some constraints for you too. So constraints are limitations that you have to work within. So your limits today are that you can use half a cup of water per recipe, and you can use up to three teaspoons of each of our ingredients. You don't have to use all three teaspoons and you don't have to use all of your ingredients. So do you have any questions before you get started? Can I start? Yeah, go for it. It's important to let your child create whatever recipes they want even if it's one you know won't work so well. You can use questions to help your child make observations about what is working well and what is not, and encourage them to redesign to make their recipes even better. All right, gonna give it a good mix. So I had two teaspoons of soap, one teaspoon of glycerin, and half a teaspoon of cornstarch, and half a cup of water. Why do you think those ingredients are gonna make long-lasting bubbles? I think because they're the strong ingredients. Okay, let's see. And they're kind of heavy. Okay, let's bust. see how it works. 
Ooh, that one bounced. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Does it last a long time? Oh. It seems I I can all, I almost can't pop it. <gasps> it's a secondary bubble. Whoa. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so what do you think about this bubble recipe? It's the best bubble recipe. Okay, do you think you could make a recipe that makes bubbles that last even longer? Maybe. All right, I'm gonna try to challenge you to make at least two more recipes and we can compare it to see how they do against this first bubble recipe. Should I write down my bubble first foot bubble recipe with you observations? You should write that down. <laughs> All right, so can you tell me about your favorite bubble recipe from today? I call this one Ben's Bodacious Bubbles. Ben's Bodacious Bubbles. Ben Ben's Bodacious Bubbles. Oh, nice, awesome, awesome name. So what's in Ben's Bodacious Bubbles? It has one teaspoon of shampoo, two teaspoons of soap, one teaspoon of glycerin, and half a cup of water. Okay, and how did you choose those ingredients? Well, the soap and shampoo seem to make the bubbles bigger, but the glycerin seems to make them last longer. Okay, well, let's see Ben's Bodacious Bubbles in action. Ben's Bodacious Bubbles. Whoa. Oh, bodacious indeed. Looks like you put those STEM skills to the test today. Wow. I hope this video gives you the confidence to try out this STEM activity with your kids. Remember, it's not about making the perfect bubble recipe. It's about encouraging your kids to make observations, think critically about their decisions, and be creative in the way they solve problems. And most importantly, it's about having fun. Good luck.